Welcome to another episode of Rock and Roll Flashback with your host, Bill Price. This edition of Rock and Roll Flashback features the story of Sam the Sham and the Pharaohs. Surprisingly, during the mid-1960s, at the height of Beatlemania, the band managed to have two top ten hits and four releases that made it into the top 40, despite several personnel changes in the band. They were best known for their unique songs and the distinctive costumes they wore. Domingo Samudio was born on March 6, 1937, in Dallas, Texas. He began singing when he was in second grade, representing his school on a radio program. Several years later, he started playing guitar and with his friends formed a group. Interestingly, one of the friends was none other than Trini Lopez, who would later have a successful career. After graduating from high school, he joined the Navy, where he acquired the nickname Big Sam. After the military, he returned to Texas and enrolled at the Arlington State College. But after two years, he left. Then in 1961, Sam formed a band which he named the Pharaohs. The inspiration for the name and the costumes came from the 1956 film, The Ten Commandments. Members of the Pharaohs included Carl Meitke, Russell Fowler, Omar Lopez, and Vincent Lopez. In 1962, the band recorded and released a single, but unfortunately, it failed to generate any sales, and as a result, the group disbanded. By 1963, Vincent Lopez was in Louisiana playing with a group called Andy and the Night Riders. Sam then joined the band when the organist left the group. The Night Riders started playing at the Congo Club close to Leesville, Louisiana, where they became the house band. While playing at the Congo Club, Sam adopted the name Sam the Sham as a result of a joke regarding his singing ability. The Knight Riders then relocated to Memphis, Tennessee in June 1963, performing as the house band at the Diplomat. In late summer, Andy and Vincent left the band and returned to Texas. Jerry Patterson and Ray Stinnett joined the group as the replacements. Sam then changed the band's name to Sam the Sham and the Pharaohs and added Butch Gibson on saxophone. In late 1964, the band recorded their first and biggest hit, Wooly Bully, on the XL label in Memphis. After the MGM label released a single, it sold 3 million copies. Surprisingly, Wooly Bully managed to reach number two on the Billboard Hot 100 in June 1965 when the music charts were dominated by the British invasion. The single was also awarded a gold disc. Interestingly, even though it stalled at number two, it remained on the Hot 100 chart for 18 weeks. The next two singles, Juju Hand and Ring Dang Do, were minor hits. Juju Hand made it to number 26 in the U.S. and number 31 in Canada. By the end of 1965, Butch Gibson, Jerry Patterson, David Martin, and Ray Stinnett quit the band due to a dispute over financial issues. Leonard Stogel, who was Sam's manager, discovered a band that went by the name of Tony G. and the Gypsies, appearing at the Metropole Cafe in New York. Band members were Tony Girars, Frankie Carabetta, Billy Bennett, and Andy Kuha. They then became the new members of the Pharaohs, which recorded Little Red Riding Hood. The single peaked at number two for a couple of weeks on the Hot 100 chart, beginning on the week of April 3, 1965. After the success of Wooly Bully and Little Red Riding Hood, 
Other releases follow, which included Hair on My Chinny Chin Chin, which peaked at number 22 in the U.S. and number 13 in Canada. How Do You Catch a Girl, number 22 in the U.S. and number 12 in Canada. If I Couldn't Spell, a No That's Good, No That's Bad, which managed to reach number 54 in the U.S. Then in late 1966, Fran Curico, Lorraine Gennaro, and Jane Anderson joined Sam as the Shamettes. Billed as Sam the Sham of the Pharaohs and the Shamettes, they performed in Asia and recorded and released an album titled Sam the Sham Review. Later, Sam released a solo album in 1967 titled Ten of Pentacles. By 1970, Sam decided to go off on his own and in 1971 released the album Sam Hard and Heavy on the Atlantic Record label. He wrote the liner notes for the album, which won the Grammy Award for Best Album Notes. In the 1980s, Sam collaborated with Ry Cooter and Freddie Fender, working on the soundtrack for the Jack Nicholson film The Border. Once he left the music business, he worked as an interpreter in Mexico and later appeared as a motivational speaker. In 2016, Sam was inducted into the Memphis Music Hall of Fame. As of 2023, he was still making occasional performances. This has been a look back at the history of Sam the Sham and the Pharaohs, one of rock and roll's unique bands. This has been another episode of Rock and Roll Flashback with your host, Bill Price. And until next time... Rock on, rock on, rock on, rock on. Uno, dos, one, two, tres, cuatro. (laughs) 